All right, let's talk about how to close a customer in the next few days. Would you like to get a new customer in the next few days? Well, uh, let's look at these sales statistics. This is from clickfunnels.com, but I've seen this many times before from sales statistics organizations. And the numbers are always approximately the same. And it says 2% of sales are made on the first contact. Only 2% of the people that you walk up to out of 100 and approach about your, your product or service is ready to buy. They're like, where were you all my life? I need this right now. Hey, that's 2%, 2%. 3% are made on the second contact when you follow up with them and see how they're doing. 3%, is that a lot? No. 5% of sales are made on the third contact. Maybe now you've shared with them uh, the concept or your or a tool. The second time you followed up with them, see if they saw the tool. The third time you're following up with them now to give them a different tool. The 10% of sales are made on the fourth contact. Are we still at any groundbreaking statistic yet? No, but 80%, 80% of all sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. Are you reading that with me? Are you seeing here what I'm seeing? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So if we're really honest with ourselves, let's get into our follow-up notebooks or our CRM where you keep your contacts and look at this, shame on me. Shame on me, I only contact, I only followed up with this person once. I only expose this person once and never call them ever again. I only follow up with that person once. Shame on me, okay? So anytime I'm like, why haven't I signed up somebody in a long time? I got to inspect what I expect. Now, this past month, I had stuff that more looked like this. See? Where I exposed, I followed up, I followed up, followed up, had a conversation, sent another tool, talked to him again, followed up, followed up, followed up, followed up. We signed up 10 customers. We signed up 10 members in the last 30 days. So when my pipeline and my workbook looks more like that, that's when I'm getting more sales. But look at these other statistics. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. Ouch. 48%. That's, call it, uh, that's almost half. That's like you planted the seed and then you walked away. <laughs> and, and, and we're waiting for people, we're waiting for sales to fall out of the sky. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and stop, but how many percent of sales are made on the second contact? Only 3%. 12% of salespeople make more than three contacts, and that's why there's that top 10% of performers. It's not that they're necessarily better than anybody else, the top 10% in sales or in business or in our company. It's that they are doing more of the follow-ups and scooping up all the business, okay? If 12% are making three or more contacts, that makes up this 5%, 10 and 80%, 95% of all the sales. 12% of the salespeople are scooping up 95% of all the sales. So if you know this, let's now take a closer look at what it takes in our business to get to the next step, multiple exposures, three to five, okay? Our five-step system says we share with at least two new people a day. So we're planting two new seeds a day that we're in business. We show them a tool, whether we're giving them the Legal Shield video, a private business overview. We're walking them through a flip chart or we have a Zoom presentation like I just had a one-to-one -one with someone from my BNI networking group and shared with them the Legal Shield flip chart, okay? So that's a tool. That's a first exposure. Now, the next step can be any one of these things in any order, but this is the suggested order. It doesn't have to be this way. So the next step might be three-way call putting them on the phone with somebody else to share their testimonial. Say, hey, I'd love to introduce you to my business partner who's helped, who's been so helpful to me. 
They're extremely knowledgeable and successful, and we've been having a lot of fun together. Hold on, let me get them on the line. You've got to hear their story. Okay, depending upon whether you're enrolling them for a membership or you're introducing them into the business. Typically for a membership, you don't necessarily need to do a three-way call, but sometimes people have technical questions and it's great for them to get their questions answered. Especially if someone wants to do this business, do not sign somebody up until you've done a three-way call or a welcome call. Now, if someone wants to sign up, sign them up, okay? But immediately put them on a welcome call for the business opportunity, because they need to know that it's duplicatable. They need to know that when they get started and they start introducing it to people and they know zero information, or they maybe only know 1% of the information, uh, they can still go out and sign up people because all they need to do is put someone on a three-way call with an expert who can answer all their questions and they can earn while they learn. People will do with their prospects what you did with them. So you're going to help people out. 95% of their training is done by the time they've joined you in the business. So make sure if you stick to the system as much as you can, it'll help them succeed. Step number four is inviting them to a live event. Let's honestly look at all the people in your contact book or wherever you keep your prospects. Okay. I've got to look at it visually me because it's nice that I have my digital prospect app, right? Our contact relationship manager, but I can't see at a glance all these notes in this and say, oh, Liz, you better get to work. You know, you better get to work, Liz. Look at all these, look at all these empties, empty spaces. Oh my gosh. Okay. That means that I'm, if I want to get closer to the sale, that these spaces need to be filled in with writing, followed up, made this call on this day. This is the conversation we had. Right? You're deepening your rapport with that person. You're, you're educating them a little bit more. Right, People, prospects buy and make decisions in little bite-sized chunks. Some people can't consume an encyclopedia of information in one day. So that's why it's just little touches, little updates, a little bit more education, a little bit correcting in their thinking because maybe they, they're interested, but they're like, well, what kind of attorneys am I going to get for $29 a month? Is it going to be a, a college, you know, graduate? Is it going to be as someone who just got out of law school? No. Now we can correct them and say, hey, our attorneys have average of 20 years experience practicing the law and we retain the largest firms in North America. We pay the California firm over a million dollars a month. That's the type of attorney you get. Now they're their thinking, their objection has been corrected with that little touch. Had you not picked up the phone and made that call, they may be thinking the other thing. Does that make sense? The more touches. What else can you do? You can invite them to a live event. We have live Zoom presentations every night at 5 p.m. Pacific, right? For our team. You can invite them to your next local Super Saturday. There is nothing like belief through the roof when your prospect can see it. Everyone say, see it to believe it. See it to believe it, okay? And so you invite them to a live Super Saturday or a local luncheon in your area. Now they're meeting the people. Um, Ray, you guys know Ray. Um, he invited his wife to come to our team retreat this weekend. And his wife may have been skeptical before, maybe, um, you know, why are you going on one of those meetings? Why are you going to this event? Where are you going? But when she came, she's she... He literally said, and he posted on my Facebook wall when I posted a picture of all of us. Um, let me find this. It was so nice of him to say this, but um, uh, okay. Hold on, I'm trying to find it. Come on. He was saying how, okay, I posted a million pictures. So now I'm not sure which one he commented on. Uh, here it is, life-changing event. I learned so much. I met some great people. My wife loves you all. You showed her that real people exist in our business, not just fake hype. She loves the, she loved the trip. I loved it. Time to make things happen. So when you can take someone to a live event, boom, okay? Has your prospect gotten there? You could take a look at your notes and say, oh, no, I, I've done step one, but I haven't done step two. I haven't done step three. I haven't done step four. How do we get them to the next step? Pick up the phone and get them to the next step right? Don't wait for a text message to inspire them to get to the next step. It's the tonation in our voice. It's the transfer of belief. It's the transfer of excitement. 
The more you can pick it up, talk it up, hang it up, pick it up, talk it up, hang it up, the faster you're going to get to your next customer, your next sale. Your next sale is always a few more follow-up calls away and a few more new exposures away. And then the fifth thing is to drip on them until they're ready to sign up. Give them, invite them to more events. Maybe they went to the Zoom presentation. Maybe they need to come to the team training. Maybe they went to the Zoom and the team training and they need to come to the Meet the Mentor call on Tuesdays and Thursdays at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Maybe they've been to those things and they need to come to another training. Maybe they need to come to another briefing. Maybe they need to come to your state-specific live Zoom business briefing, which is slightly different than the team one because there's more testimonials, there's a lot of more interaction, there's training around it. They get a chance to maybe even introduce themselves. So multiple tools. You can follow up and give them the Prosper magazine. You can physically mail it to them. I've got, I have got a whole box. See this box? I've got this box of um, these envelopes that I bought. All right, you get a box of these envelopes from Amazon for 15 bucks and then magazines. And if I've got a prospect that seems interested and is a quality prospect worth investing in, I will go ahead and stick it in here. And then I'll attach a little note, right? Little note, you know, look forward to working with you. You've got a wonderful personality. Look forward to making big things happen together. I'll attach the business card and I'll put it in the mail. All right, make sure your sticker's on there, okay? Because these tools travel. We've I've sent a tool before to somebody and they put it on their coffee table. The girlfriend comes over and is like, what's this? And the girlfriend signs herself up, calls the number, <laughs> okay? So I've even known people, I've known, I've, I've sent that to somebody, they chucked it in the back seat of their car and the person cleaning, the auto detailer cleaning their car found the magazine, looked at it, called the number, and signed the uh, auto detailer up. So tangible tools are fantastic. Brian Carruthers has his um, little green books, Making My First 10 Million. I've been, it's a story of residual and leveraged income. I just ordered a hundred of those to give them out to people. In fact, um, he has a promo code I'll put in the chat here. It's, um, it's if you go to Making My First 10 Million, book.com, I think, or making my first 10 million.com. The promo code is MMFTM50, MMFTM for making my first 10 million 50. That's the promo code you could put at making my first 10 million book.com. And you can hand those out. So they're only, that promo code will get you 50% off. So they're only 50 cents a piece. And then we have testimonial videos that you can send from the Prospect app. There's the Profiles of Success. We're featured in amazing news articles that you could send to people and brochures. So let me take you to where to find this stuff. If you go to your website, your We Are Legal Shield website, at the top, it says become an associate, which is pulling up slowly here. So at the top where it says become an associate, um, you can click here. It says join the team or profiles of success. So click on profiles of success and find somebody that mirror matches the person. Okay. So if, if I go to mom, for example, and search mom, I'm going to find people. Oh, maybe I need to be a little bit more specific. Let me say fitness. Okay, let's say I'm exposing my personal trainer and I want them to have a story they can relate to. Well, look, Patty Schultz was in the airline, cruise ship, banking, finance, fitness, and a personal trainer. There you go. If I, wanna, if I want someone who is a religious leader, maybe I might search pastor, for example. I can find, um, maybe it's listed under something, something else, religious Search stuff is so sensitive. I know we've got lots of pastors in the business. Um, maybe uh, come up with something else. Um, let's just say uh, Cairo 
chiropractor. <laughs> or real estate's a good one to pull up. Okay, I'm 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 like shooting shooting blanks here. Um, okay, real estate. I'm probably just, I was thinking maybe just type in a couple letters and see what comes up. Yeah, because it, it it like messes it up when I type too many. But look at all these real estate professionals. So let's just say I want, let's say um, Bonnie Jones is someone that I think can relate to my girlfriend real estate agent. Well, if I go to Bonnie's full bio, I can now um, see her story. And then I can copy the top here and paste it. It still has my name. So it's attributed to my website. Okay, but it ends with Bonnie's profile. So it'll take her to the same site where she can read Bonnie's story. And then she can still click on memberships, for example, and learn about Legal Shield and sign up and get a membership or join the team. So again, share the stories. Share the stories with people. That's one thing. Another thing you can do is share um articles, articles about us. Did you know that we've been featured in Forbes magazine and Yahoo Finance and Bloomberg and CNBC? I mean, it's incredible. So I know that if you go to, um, hold on, I'm trying to find where it is. They just changed the website, but I know, um, Da, 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 about us, our story. It might be okay. If I go to about us, hey Jim, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm at the dentist office with my daughter. Oh, hi Jada. <laughs> I even like the about us section, which you can still again if you go from your website, it still has your name on the front. It's attributed to you, and they can read about the history of Legal Shield, which gives it more credibility. They can read the Harlan Stone Cipher story, which really touches their hearts of why people really need this and how this product came about when he was frivolously sued by somebody else when it was the lady's fault who hit him. She sued him anyway. And he had to use his entire life saving to defend himself. So um, maybe it's in the news. Anyway, okay. So that's that, but I know if you go to legalshield.com slash newsroom, you can find all the articles that we were featured in, or I'm sorry, pplsi.com slash newsroom. And, you know, we were featured in all these amazing articles that you could click on and find one that you like. U.S. News and World Report, all right, did an article about um, real estate, but featured legal shield as a solution to that. So if you click here and you find the article that you like, I mean, US News and World Report is a huge um, publication. It's a great, credible article that you could share with someone. You can even share it on your social media too. But when I physically send it to somebody personally, it's amazing. They can even see all the awards that we've won. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily send them to the newsroom without pointing out a specific article. But if you go and find a specific article right here on the right-hand side, it says view all. And you can see how we were featured in US News and World Report, Millie Magazine, Fortune Magazine, Investopedia, Money.com, Yahoo. We were featured in Yahoo. Uh, the top best identity theft protection services, PC Magazine, Direct Selling News, US News World Report again, Cal Broker Magazine, Consumer Affairs, Forbes Magazine. Come on, guys. Are we part of a strong company or what? And that's one page of 18 pages of positive articles we've been featured in. Guess what? If you just went here every week, okay, every week, look, September 22, September 8, August 11, at least twice a month and you went and took this article, eight things to do if you're when you're laid off. Of course, one of them, Legal Shield was featured. Legal Shield was featured in here. You could take this article and you could say, legal, our company that, that you're looking at joining, 
was featured in yet another article. And if you keep sending these to people, guess what? They're gonna realize that you're legit, you're powerful. This is a force to be reckoned with, an incredible service to be a part of, an incredible service to promote. People are gonna feel empowered. And the more tools you put in their hands, um, the more the more they appreciate that. I will say this. Yes, you're gonna give them multiple tools, but don't spam the heck out of them. If someone, if you're sending like five, six, seven tools after tool and they haven't responded to you, they're probably, they might not be enjoying that. So you wanna make sure you're physically picking up the phone and calling them and having a conversation. I like to say, I'm not allowed to text you more than four times if I haven't talked to you or, or connected with you and saw you, caught up with you like this, right? Because then I'm spamming you. So we want to make sure that our interactions are a positive reminder of who we are and not a, a negative. I also want to point out something um, when it comes to social media. Social media, in my opinion, has been a fabulous CRM, contact relationship manager. And um, I've met people at networking groups and I, and I would take their cards like this, okay? And then I'll send this guy an invitation to, um, to be my friend. So let me see, let me show you. Let me go to Facebook, okay, for example. And I'll add them as my friend if they'll allow it. And um, this was the musician that played in Lake Las Vegas. We went and saw him two nights in a row. He was so fantastic. He had us dancing. He had, you know, Kathy Montoya dancing the whole time. <laughs> so it was incredible. And um, so just send them a quick message and just say, hey, it was really wonderful meeting you at the whatever restaurant we were at, Vino del Lago. And uh, let's stay in touch. Let's be friends. Right. Or I'm at a networking group. And I'll add you and say, it was wonderful meeting you at BNI today. Let's be friends. Of course, my internet's working really slow right now, but you guys get it. So um, what, what'll happen is, yes, you may be following up with them by physically calling and texting, but you're passively following up with them when they see you smiling face. And Angela just took a walk this morning and did five miles, 5.2 miles and then ate her awesome salad and posted her positive quote for the day, they're remembering and seeing Angela. So even though they only heard Angela give one commercial this week at their networking group, and maybe you only share with them one tool, they're seeing you every day if they're on social media every day or once a month or however they're interacting. Does that make sense? Okay, so when you're adding people, there's that, but I wanna, I wanna point out something that's very important. If you're going to brand yourself on social media, be sure to check your messages regularly. This is something that I made the mistake of not doing as regularly. And I would have people reach out to me and then it was like, I was ignoring them. And, and they're like, well, forget you, okay? I'm making that up in my head. I think that, I think that. And the reason why I think that is because I have somebody, um, whether he friended me or I friended him, I can't remember, but he looks like this very successful financial planner. And I'm like, ooh, this is somebody that I would love to connect with, someone I would love to learn from, maybe even eventually invest with. You know, he seems to be like, he knows what he's doing. So I start following him, I'm liking and commenting on his posts. And, you know, no response, that's fine. But multiple liking, commenting on his, his, his post. And then I reach out to him and I send him a private message. Hey, it looks like you're doing amazing things. I'd love to learn more about what you do. I'm trying to give him my business. Okay. Or I'm checking him out really, but I'm not trying to tell him that I want to buy from him because I, I don't know yet. So I don't want to say, Hey, I want to invest with you. I'm just like, Hey, let's connect and nothing, you know, no response. And then I even message him, I put something on his wall because I noticed that he has a common friend. So I, I say he, he posts something about her and I was like, hey, I know her too, blah, blah, blah. And nothing. So really, it, it actually now when I see his posts 
of him and his fancy stuff, you know, drinking his fancy cocktail with all of his wealthy looking friends. I actually get very turned off by it now when I see him, because when I see him now, it's a reminder of how much he doesn't care about me. Now, he might just be so busy that he was honestly a mistake that he doesn't, that he hasn't checked his messages. Just like early on in my career, I was doing the same thing by accident just because I was I wasn't checking my messages. I was only checking email and text. But if you're going to have a presence and it seems like he wants to market because every post he has, he's marketing. It's not like he's just socializing. He's specifically out there marketing. And I feel like, wow, you're out there marketing, but am I not good enough for you kind of a customer? That's how it's made me feel. So just from, just as we're out there, you know, interacting with people, that is something that we want to be aware of. So let's do this. Let's open it up. What I want everybody to do is take out a pen and paper. Um, and I know, Jim, you're at the doctor's office. <laughs> but if you can go through your prospect app or your follow-up notebook right now and take a separate sheet of paper. Remember when we did this exercise of writing down a hot list a month ago? Okay. What I want you to do is it doesn't have to be a hot list, but it could just be a few names. Just a few names. And let's take a look at some of the, the ones that you were more excited about. Maybe write down five people that you met that you were really excited about that seemed to be a great fit, a great candidate, or that was leaning in and seemed to be more interested than not. Okay, take a minute and write those names down. And then what we want to do is talk through uh, at least one of them and what needs to happen next. So while you're writing those down, I'll just do one example here. Okay. How about... All right. So I have this financial planner that I met it, it of, of all things at my networking group. And he um, indicated interest in having me set up his company for, um, for the membership, him and all of his 1099 independent agents. So it's not an employee benefit, but it's more of his colleagues not his employees, but his coworkers that all share office space together. And he wanted me to come in and do a presentation there um, to them. So for him, so far, he just has a brochure. That's all he has. What are my next steps? What are my next steps? What do I need to do? I need to call him. I need to call him. I need to see how he's doing. Where is he at with that, right? Would he like me to send him more information? Hey, Dan, it's Liz, just saying hello. Would you like me to send you more information? Or would you like to set a time um, when I can bring in salads and subs and pizza for the group and do a little lunch and learn, right? We're following up, we're reaching out. If I leave a voicemail because I don't get him, I'm gonna send him a text with the same thing. Sometimes people read the texts first, but if you also left a voicemail, they'll realize that it's an important call. So how about you, Angela? Let's pick one person on your list. The first person I picked out, um, this one, the new prospect app we have, it, it just makes it a little bit difficult, you know, still trying to figure out who's who on there and how it's how it's played. But I'm trying to do tag and and put them in a certain order. So I went through the warm people. But even though the prospect app shows them as warm, it shows that they received the campaign, but it doesn't necessarily show that they read it. So that part's kind of confusing. But I was looking through the names and this one lady, I was so surprised um, with my um, food program that I got a voicemail from her and she said that she'd like to check out um, my home-based business. You know, she goes, I like to check out what you're doing, even though I don't know what you're doing. She goes, I would really like to get information on that. And I was just sitting there and I was just looking at my phone. I saw that. I was like, oh, so that really sparked my interest. I was really glad to see that. 
So I went ahead and texted her um, yesterday and asked her, um, did she, she gave me her email, asked her, did she want to get it by email? And so what I did is I added her to my app. I sent her information and then I asked her, I said, if you can go ahead and check out um, the information I sent you, I said, if you have time tomorrow, I said, I can invite you to a Zoom that we're going to have. And she said, yes. She said, yes, she would like that. And I asked her, was she available at 8 p.m. Eastern? And she said, yes, I am. And so I'm going to invite her to that. I haven't given her the link yet, but I'm gonna, that'll give me the opportunity to touch base with her today. And I'll give her the link today so that she can get on this evening. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. So first exposure. Today will be the second exposure. Okay. okay. And um, if she doesn't reply back that she got your message and she'll be there, then definitely give her a call too. Okay. If they see, they may have gotten the ping and saw your name come up, but if they also got a call from you, or if your number is not programmed into their phone and they see a ping from your number and a voicemail from your number, they'll remember it's important. Awesome. Okay. okay. Great. Katie, let's talk about your guy from TikTok. You met this guy okay. from TikTok, business professional. Uh, so, Kyan, it's, let's see. So, we talked briefly about like the business stuff, we exchanged numbers, we um, set up, I said, I scheduled uh, an appointment with him yesterday. We did the appointment and then we did the flip chart and then we went to a live Zoom and that's where it ended. Had a little follow-up after, but no phone call yet, just the text. All right, so he came to the Zoom. So definitely, what does Katie need to do right now? As soon as we get off the phone. Call. 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 She needs, that's right, she needs to call him. <laughs> you wanna call him immediately and build more rapport. Say, hey, because have you physically talked to him yet? Yes, yep. Okay. A few times. A few times, all right. So just say, hey, you know, what did you like best? What stood out to you? Thank you for coming. Hear his okay. thoughts. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. And then what's the next step on that conversation? What's the next step? Well, I want to close so I could ask him if he was if he was ready to get started or if he had any further questions, concerns, or if he was ready to get started. Or how would you phrase it? Now, is he primarily just yeah, 9102? Or is he interested in yeah. joining the team? Well, um, I think a little bit of both. Um, it sounded like more income, you know, joining the team and it could benefit his business as well. So go hand in hand. So what do we always want to do before we sign somebody up? Or a three-way call with a professional. Yes, yes. Introduce them to the team. Most people don't make a confident decision to make a career choice or change until they've met a couple of people that work there, right? So, okay. Yeah, let's do a three-way call. Let's do three. So I got to do it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Got it. Great. Great. All right. How about you, Jim? Who do you got? Go ahead and unmute. You're muted. Something I something that um, I do, I'll share with this too. You know. When you talk to somebody, it doesn't necessarily always mean that you're looking for a membership. I mean, hopefully that will ultimately come, but uh, I've been doing some networking events, uh, breakout rooms on Alignable. And last week I ended up meeting a couple of guys. I've had a conference with one of them. Um, his name's Matt, actually works with a company that is a great fit for us um, because what they do is they help business owners create credit using their tax identification number, not their personal social security number. And he's in the same exact one to 50 space that we are. So uh, when we talked uh, last week, our first conference, I actually had four referrals for him. 
Um, he gave me two yesterday. We had a call today with Bob. We had a conference call with Bob uh, or a three-way call this morning. And we've already got a, a follow-up call on Monday with Bob because Matt really wants to take this to the next level. And Bob, I told him, let's just kind of plant some seeds uh, as far as bringing him on as an associate. So, you know, sometimes people like that, they'll get it. The other guy I talked to is in the mortgage business. His name's Drew. We were on the on the one call. I just gave him a quick little 30 second. This is what we do. He's like, we need you need to call me after this. I, I've got clients that could use this. Let's have a conversation. And uh, so we did a follow up call right after our uh, alignable meeting. And then we had a conference call Tuesday uh, and he's ready to get going. So we're in the process of following up with him tomorrow. He's out in uh, Idaho. So wow. we're following up tomorrow and getting him set up and signed up. And we're going to schedule either a will workshop or some type of a workshop for his existing homeowners and clients. So. Yeah. You know, so don't always necessarily go into it looking for a sale, go into it. it there's there's companies and, and industries that we work with or that work well with us. I like to say we play nice with. So mm -hmm. it's really important to keep your eyes open for those type of relationships. I love it. I love it. That's great. Did you hear how Jim's got just, he's already moving to the next steps, what the next steps are. Um, and we all know that, that that's what we need to do, but sometimes we get blind to that while we're out there in the garden planting the seed. We're planting, we're planting, we're planting, we're digging holes, to, digging new holes to plant the seeds, but we're out there sweating in the sun, it's just hitting us. Yeah. And we're just like, oh my God, I just want some fruit. I just want some fruit. I want some harvest, but we yeah. forget to get to the harvest. We got to work it down. We got to nurture it. We got to pour, put water on it and cultivate it and pour sunshine and fertilizer and take them from the next exposure to the next, to the next, to the next. We need to fill these lines. You know what? Can I just real quick, because um, I have to go back in, but uh, we had one of the things that I've always learned in sales training and stuff is to have a clear future. So before you finish one, you know, we talk about book a meeting from a meeting. It's the same concept. Always know what your next step is, even if you have to ask the person you're talking to. So what do you see the next step is with us? You know, mm -hmm. what do you see we should do next? Where are you with this? And they'll let you know. And if they're unsure, you know, they may bounce it back and go, well, what do you think I should do? What do you think the next step is? Well, in my opinion, the, the most important thing from our conversation, it seems to me like you want to make some money. So the best thing to do would be you should become an associate. I mean, we could do it as a referral basis, but you tell me, would you rather make a hundred dollars on a on a thirty dollar membership or twenty five bucks? Oh, I want a hundred. Okay, well let's sit sit down and figure that out. Wow, you know what? That is my takeaway from today. What's the next step? Because we're used to saying to them. The next step is to meet one of our leaders who can answer your question, or the next step is to come meet us on a Zoom. But I've never thought of asking them what the next step is, because then they'll say, well, I need, I need to see more. I need to, I need to think about it, which means they need to see more information, right? So, Pat Jen, that's powerful. Thank you. Angela, you want to and say you know something? What? Yeah, I wanted to tell you um, that that is that is powerful. I had to write that down. But also something you said, and this is like a continuation from last night's meeting. And when you said when you were talking about that, the um, orchard, orchid, but you know what, just now when you said about us digging a hole and putting a seed in there, I look at my phone and I look at my app and I look at all those holes that I, I dug and I planted all those seeds in there and not seeing them grow you know, but am I nurturing them? Am I watering them? Am I dripping on them? I mean, the system is dripping on them with, with the information, but am I doing my part? That's that's not happening, you know? And it's like, I, I was up there writing another note. Um, you know, when you held up your book and you were talking about, um, oh, let me work with this person, work with that person and what notes I have on there. 
I have the spreadsheet online, but I don't have that spreadsheet with me so I can see who are stronger, the stronger ones written down. And don't worry about the weaker ones, leave those on the spreadsheet. But the ones that I've actually talked to, actually gave material to, and maybe gone to a Zoom, whatever it may be, there's ones that are hotter than other ones. Other ones are cold or warm, but there's some that are on the hot that should be in my journal. You know, mm -hmm. those, there are different classification. And I never did that before, but I wrote that on my notes too, to do a hard one like you have, you know, so I need to switch some stuff up, you know, but I am, I'm thankful because otherwise I wouldn't. And I wanted to, um, to let you guys know, I was so surprised when I sent that lady, um, Donna yesterday information, when the email came up for me to look at it and send it to her, I noticed that the new app, it put my home phone number and I said, oh my gosh. And I was like, I just kept saying, oh my gosh, I said, I got to fix this. So I was able to go back in the, in the app, look at my profile, and I changed it to correct number for my cell phone. But I mean, I don't know how many are out there with my home number because I don't use my home number. But I was like, oh my gosh, let me pay attention to that. And I'm glad I did that I happened to look at it. I'm glad so you a lot of out. We all need to be making sure it's the right number. <laughs> wow, that is great. That's great, Angela. So, hey, Jada. <laughs> so now we know what we need to do. Now we know what we need to do. We need to work our list down. Have you ever heard somebody in sales say that? Work the list down. And you're like, what does that, does that mean? What they mean is, you know, you've got your list. Work it down, okay? Take it from just the first exposure to the next, to the next, to the next. Be making multiple calls. If you work your list down in the next three days, you're going to have a sale. Just that's just the way it is. You are going to have fruit, okay? I know you will. So I don't, know what, I don't even know that now that you said that because I didn't even mention anything about it because I did make a sale and it was it was it was kind of surprising because it was another lady from my food my food program. But you know what? I have been making sure I wear my shirt, brand myself, wear my shirt, do my meetings, you know? And I got this call from this lady saying, Anza, I want to find out more, send her information. Then she wanted to sign up. I sent her my website and stuff. And I said, oh, this lady's just talking. But she wasn't. She was just busy because she works for an attorney. She was busy, you know, and she didn't have time. But she actually signed up for the legal show and ID show. So I was like, oh my gosh, I got somebody. <laughs> You know, and it's like this, like this lady also is from the food program. So I'm going to make sure that I keep wearing my brand, you know, keep branding myself and keep being out there because like, you never know who's watching. You never know who's listening. You never know who wants what, you know. It's true. It's true. I love it. All right, guys. Well, appreciate you. I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you're just chomping at the bit to work your list down. I'm going to give you 15 more minutes of your day so you can get, get at it. And I know you're going to sign somebody up. I know, I know you will. You're going to pull some fruit from someone that just needs one more phone call from you today. All right. I love you. I'm proud of you. And let's go get it. Yes. Thank you. And, Bye, guys. and, and, I, and I 